Hi, I'm Eric Paul, the Chemistry Guru, and you are watching H2 Chem Hacks, making H2 Chemistry simpler, one video at a time. Hi everyone, in this video, we will learn to describe the mechanism for free radical substitution of alkenes. Now let's look at a very simple example involving methane plus Cl2 in the presence of UV light to give us CH3Cl and HCl. Now before we draw the mechanism for free radical substitution, it's a good idea for us to go through why alkanes undergo free radical substitution instead of other reactions. Now, if I look at my alkane carbon, the carbon is either bonded to a carbon hydrogen bond or a carbon carbon bond, which means that the carbon in general is not polar or it doesn't carry any charge. So, if it's not positively charged, it doesn't attract negative species, it doesn't attract any profile. If it's not negatively charged, it doesn't attract any positive species, it doesn't attract any electrophile. So, the only species that's willing to react with my alkane carbon will be a free radical. Now this will explain why alkanes in general are unreactive. It doesn't react with electrophiles, it doesn't react with mucophiles. Now explaining why alkanes undergo substitution is pretty simple because my carbon in alkanes is saturated so it cannot undergo addition reaction, otherwise we have 5 bonds which is not allowed. So it must undergo substitution reaction when one Cl is attached to my carbon, then it must kick out one hydrogen. So this will explain why alkanes undergo free radical substitution reaction. A free radical substitution, there are basically three steps. The first step is my initiation step, which involves the homolytic fission of my CLCL bond. Now we show the homolytic fission of my CLCL bond by using half an arrow to show the movement of one electron. So one electron in this covalent bond will go back to the CL on the left hand side, and then the other electron will go to the CL on the right hand side. So the products formed will be two chlorine radical, which is an all electron species, which is represented by a dot next to my chlorine. Usually, the energy that is used to break the CL CL bond will come from our ultraviolet light. So, this is the initiation step, which is pretty simple. It forms our chlorine radical, which will be involved in the next step, which is our propagation step. So the next step will be our propagation step where our chlorine radical will take a hydrogen away from my alkene. So what happens is hydrogen will take back its electron from this CH bond and forms a bond with Cl as shown by this arrow pushing. So hydrogen basically will take its own electron form a bond with Cl. So the product form in this case will have a HCl bond so basically, we have the HCl as our product. And this carbon will have to take back its own electron. And what it will form is a CH3. And this carbon has an all electron. So this CH3 will be a radical. Usually, the first step of the propagation step is the slow step. So we can write down slow for this step. Now what we notice next is now this methyl becomes the radical, so it will continue with the reaction. So this methyl group will be involved in the next step. That's why it's called a propagation step, because in general propagation step is when you have a radical, reacting with something stable, form a stable product, it generates another radical, and then this radical will continue with the reaction. That's why it's considered as a propagation of reaction. So we'll draw this methyl group uh, below. And what this metal group will do is it will react with our CLCL. So what this carbon will do is it will take our chlorine. So essentially this CLCL bond will break. So this chlorine will bind with my carbon to form a CH3Cl. Then my chlorine will have to take back its own electron. This will regenerate your chlorine radical. Now, some ideas we want to take note of for propagation step. First thing, propagation is totally random. What we are drawing is the shortest possible path to reach to our desired 
product that we want to show. So, so if the question asks us to draw the formation of my CH3Cl, I just need to show that this CH3Cl is formed, then I can stop the propagation step and we can proceed to the next step, which is our termination step. What this means is there are a lot of other random reactions that are taking place because it involves radicals. So radicals actually they are not picky. They will react with any species that it comes into contact with. There are a lot of other reactions that are taking place, but we're not interested in showing them because it doesn't lead to a desired outcome. So we just focus on the compound that we want to show. We write down the shortest possible number of steps to reach the product that we want and then you can proceed on to the next step. Now another idea is because the bulk of the reaction will be our propagation step because the chances of a radical meeting a neutral species is very very high so most of the steps that are involved in free radical substitution is my propagation step so any products that you can form in the propagation step will be found in large amounts. So now we can move on to the termination step. So let's just briefly talk about how termination step works. It's actually very simple. Eventually, the radicals will have to meet each other and they will uh, form a stable compound between them. And then the total number of radicals in the reaction mixture will decrease. Eventually, all the radicals will meet each other and the reaction will stop. So the radicals that we choose to use in our termination step is actually very simple. I just choose any two radicals I form in my propagation step and I just combine them together. So what I can do is I can react CH3 uh, radical with a Cl radical. That will be the first step we will write down. Then the second step will be CH3 with another CH3 radical which is the second uh, termination step that I will write down. Okay, as mentioned previously, these are the two combination steps that we will write down. One involving choline radical and my methyl radical, and the other one involving two methyl radicals. Again, these few radicals can be found in the propagation step, so there's no need for us to memorize. You just pull any two radicals you can find in the propagation step, and you just drag them together in the termination step. So basically what they will do is they will just combine together to form a covalent bond between them. So this will just become a CH3 bonded to a CL. Now the second reaction will be the same. These two metal radicals will just uh, combine together and form a covalent bond between carbon and carbon to form my ethane. Now certain things for us to take note for our termination step. You notice the products are stable, so therefore they are no longer reactive, they no longer take by the reaction. That's why it's considered as a termination step. Again, as the reaction proceeds for free radical substitution, the total number of radicals eventually will increase as the radicals start to meet each other. So eventually the radicals will run out. Now another point which is interesting to take note of is you notice we start off with uh, methane, which is a one carbon alkane, uh, but under free radical substitution, what can happen is my two metal radicals can combine together to give you uh, ethane, that means the doubling of the number of carbon. Now, what you notice is the uh, number of carbon uh, for my alkene actually can double, and this only takes place in termination step. So, what this means is this particular compound, where the number of carbon doubles, is only found in trace amounts because again, for free radical substitution, the bulk of the reaction is propagation step. Termination is just uh, a very, very small percentage of the total number of steps involved. So anything that is only formed in the termination step is found in trace amounts. Now after this particular discussion, I hope that you have a better understanding of free radical substitution of alkenes. If you have enjoyed this video, please share this with your friends. To learn more about H2 Chemistry, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. If you want to know more about my H2 Chemistry classes at Nishan, please visit my website. Thank you for watching H2 Chem Hacks. I hope I've made H2 Chemistry simple for you. I'll see you next time.